Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Mike here, the Rusty Garage and Homestead. Today we're working on the backhoe seat on the BH-150 on the TYM 2515H. Now that seat from the factory does not have enough room for a lot of people that have these. There's a few different options we can do on the seat itself and on the bracket to try to give us a little bit more room. We're gonna try that first. If that doesn't work, we're gonna end up fabricating something so it will fit our needs. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, you can see the seat here. That's it. That's how much room you got between the seat and the controls right here. You can pretty much, I can't get my wrist down through it. I can get my fingers, upper part of my hand. That's it. That's all the room there's in. All right, everyone, you can see I'm sitting on it just as it came from the factory. These joysticks are right up here against my belly, so it doesn't give you a lot of room to control it very well. And also the seat is so far forward that your legs are having to spread around this uh, control console here. So I think if we can get the seat moved back at least a few inches, if not a little more, uh, it's going to make it work a whole lot easier for us. Okay, everyone, you can see where the seat flips up here. It hinges right here and it's got three different positions. So I'm going to pull this bolt out, put some anises on it, and we're going to move it down to this lower bracket. You can see that bolt goes right through this tube. So moving it down here is going to give us a little bit more room. And also the seat mounting plate here has three different positions you can put the seat. And I was watching Tony's Tractor Adventure on when he moved his seat around and he tried to move it to the very furthest back position, but he couldn't because there was a lip right here on the seat. It wouldn't allow him to go to this position here. So I've already went to the store. I've got some longer bolts and we've got some spacers to try to space this out and see if that's going to help us out any. First thing we're going to do is pull this hinge bolt out, get it out of there put some anesthes on it, move it back to the furthest back setting and reinstall it. Okay, that's all there is to that. Let me get some anesthes put on this bolt we'll reinstall it okay got anesthes on the bolt but i think i'm just gonna go ahead and stick this bolt in here for now i think it's going to be easier to go ahead and take the seat plate off while we can kind of move around wherever we want and add the spacers and relocate it so let's do that next okay now the hardware store didn't have exactly what i was looking for but i did get a couple different bolts because i wasn't sure exactly which ones would work better these are all a m8 by 1.25 millimeter bolts I got some Allen headed ones and some regular hex head ones. I think the hex head ones are going to work just fine. Spacer wise, I really couldn't find a whole lot. So we're going to end up using some pipe nipples for it. I think that's going to be just fine. That's going to give us enough space to get it moved back to that last set of holes on the seat plate. Okay, these bolts are a 12 millimeter head. So you're either going to need a wrench or a ratchet to get these all loose. Okay, so here's what I was talking about. The seat plate is mounted to the seat in these middle holes all around. So this is the seat part, that's the back of it. Here's where it pivots. So we need to move this plate forward to get us more clearance. So we take this last bolt out, out of the bolt hole. There's the bolt hole. And you can't move the plate far enough down because of this rib here on the front seat. On the front of the seat so that's what the spacers are for we're going to put spacers in between here and the plate and run longer bolts on there just so we can get a little bit more room on this seat so what i ended up getting was new bolts some fender washers and some wavy washers i don't know if you can see that or not it's like a lock washer but it doesn't have the split in it the waviness once it compresses it holds tension on it keeps it from coming loose I'm supposed to get that spacer there get a bolt in Gonna run that in loose. I'll get this opposing corner and we'll start working our way around it. Poor people got poor ways. There ain't nothing wrong with it. I would have rather had some sort of smooth pipe to do this, but I'm sure this will upset somebody in the comments. All right, you can see this front lip of the seat plate, how much further it's sitting past this uh, lip on the seat where it wouldn't allow it to go. Now, this really wouldn't be a bad idea to add either Loctite or anti-seize to these bolts, but for now, we're just going to leave it as it is. We've got our gap in our seat now, 
and everything's moved to the furthest back position that it can be. So there's our bolt with some anises on it. Let's get it close. We'll try not to wear this stuff. Okay. Let's toss this nut back on. Now I didn't want the seat way high. I thought the height was okay for me, but you obviously could space it up higher to fit your needs. Now you can see, you can see on this seat here, it's not wanting to sit down all the way. It's hitting these brackets. Right back here, you can see where it's scratching the paint off and getting into the metal on both sides. So the fix for that is gonna be, try to tap this out a little bit on each side or take a grinder, clean up these edges right back here a little bit which they are protruding just a little bit back in here, but it looked like it was hitting. Yeah, that's where it's hitting right there. Okay. Well, I'm gonna get my little grinder with a flap disc and we're gonna take these edges off, clean this back up in here, and it should be good to go. Okay, we've got the grinder. Let's try to dress some of this up so it'll actually fit. Okay, that was all it needed. Take those little burrs off. So, all this spot in here that's uh, the paint's off of now, both of these spots, when I get it back up to the shop here in a bit, I'll go ahead and shoot some black paint on that. Got that little gouge mark off of there. But now, it sits down like it should. So I'm gonna tighten this hinge bolt up just a little bit more like it was, and that should be good to go. We'll give it a try. Okay, you guys remember what it was like before? I can stick my entire hand through here now. Where I, before I could barely, I could get it up here to my wrist and then it would get stuck. So quite a bit more movement back. Let's see how it feels. Okay, as you guys can see, there's definitely more room than there was, at least a couple more inches. Uh, it feels better already. My legs aren't spread out as far as they were around this console. I do think I would like it to be back just a couple more inches. There's plenty of room behind the seat. I'll show you that in just a second, but it is way better than it was. So I should be able to use this for a bit until I can come up with an idea on a bracket to move it back even further. Okay, so like I said, the seat's all the way back. There's still this much room behind the seat. So plenty of room to move it back just a few more inches. I think a few more inches would make all the difference, but that right there, night and day compared to what it was before. So you can see it is up on the spacers. The height's fine. It's on that furthest hinge point. So, way better than it was. All right, everyone, you've seen it. It wasn't that bad of a job. It did make a big difference just getting a couple more inches away from the console like it was. A couple more inches I do think is gonna help quite a bit, but overall, pretty easy job. The only thing I got left to do is when I take it to the shop here in just a little bit, hit it with a little bit of primer and paint just to keep rust from forming on the frame. So now that it's moved back, I am gonna go ahead and just go test it out real quick, dig out a little bit around one of the horns around the pond and just see how it does. So I'll include that footage right there at the end. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know what you think or if there's anything else you want to see with this backhoe. I still have a maintenance on this backhoe a video on that I'm going to be doing here in the near future. As always, everyone, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.